I guarantee you've never imagined living on Kepler-22b. Using artificial intelligence, we can model what it would be like, and the result you'll see in this video. Join me on this inspiring journey. So far, astronomers have discovered over 5,000 exoplanets, and about 100 of them are located in the habitable zone of their stars, meaning they may have conditions suitable for the existence of life. Although our technologies are not perfect for identifying traces of extraterrestrial life, we can use artificial intelligence to imagine what life would be like on these planets based on collected data. In addition, we can try to determine whether human survival on other worlds beyond Earth is possible. The more similar a planet is to ours, the higher the likelihood of finding life on it. With this in mind, scientists are focusing their efforts on studying Kepler-452b, an exoplanet that has been dubbed the second Earth. Located about 1,400 light-years away from our solar system in the constellation of Cygnus, this planet is believed to have many similarities to ours, which increases the expectation of finding life in its vicinity. Kepler-452b's orbit is located in the habitable zone of its star, which is only 20% brighter than our Sun. A year on Kepler lasts 385 Earth days, almost the same as on Earth. The average temperature on the planet's surface is about 1.5 degrees Celsius. Liquid water has been found to exist on Kepler, meaning that life could potentially develop there. The conditions on the planet could be very similar to those on Earth if it weren't for one thing. Kepler is 60% larger than our planet, which means that gravity there is twice as strong. However, life could adapt to this powerful gravity. Shrubs and small trees could grow on Kepler due to the strong gravity. They would spread along the ground and release clouds of seeds into the air. Help us grow and reach more people. If you enjoy our content, please don't forget to value my hours of research and production. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and share it with your friends on social media. On the planet Kepler, the air density is five and a half times higher than on Earth. This means that seeds can easily float above the ground, being captured by flying creatures with artificial intelligence that feed on them. These creatures resemble rays, have long tails and powerful wings that allow them to fly without ever landing on the ground. They are herbivorous and feed by flying through the clouds of floating seeds, capturing them with their huge round mouths. It's interesting to note that these creatures have a behavior similar to that of humpback whales on Earth, which feed by opening their mouths and swimming through schools of small fish, capturing them inside. However, unlike whales, the large flying rays of the planet Kepler-452b have natural enemies. At first glance, a beetle the size of a balloon could not harm a giant ray, but these predators always hunt in groups. Bacteria that release carbon live in their air bubbles, allowing the beetles to hover over the ground tracking prey. When they spot their prey, they abruptly release the carbon from the bubble and attack with lightning speed. Falcons hunt in the same way. When a bird spots its prey, it dives straight down from a height at a speed of up to 100 meters per second and captures it. On Kepler 452b, the acceleration of free fall is twice as high as on Earth, 20 and a half meters per second squared. This means that beetles can be faster than a falcon, and when they reach their prey, they cling to it using their long hooked legs.
Thus, a swarm of beetles can knock down a huge flying ray and bring it crashing to the ground. There, the victim can no longer be saved and insects will slowly eat the still living prey. Then, their bubbles will gradually fill with carbon dioxide and the insects will move on in search of a new victim. In addition to beetles, other threats loom over the flying rays during their breeding journey. After mating, females need to descend to a hill and lay their eggs, but due to their weight and strong gravity, they can no longer fly and become vulnerable to predators such as beetles. This moment is also crucial for newly hatched birds, who face a dangerous journey to the top of the cliff, where they will jump to begin their flight. Unfortunately, along the way, they may be attacked by various enemies, such as scavengers, invertebrate beings, and amorphological creatures, as described by artificial intelligence. The peculiar appearance of these beings is the result of evolution, which allowed their survival in environments with high gravity. Unfortunately, these predators attack the birds, enveloping and slowly digesting them, which means that only a few dozen offspring manage to reach the top of the cliff. Kepler is an extremely hostile world for herbivores, which leads us to question what it would be like for humans. Gravity would be the biggest enemy, increasing the workload on the heart and doubling the risk of stroke and heart attack. Surviving on the surface would be an almost impossible task, but floating in the heights would be more comfortable. For this, it would be necessary to build floating cities. However, Kepler is not the cruelest planet where life can exist. Glee 667 cubic centimeters is only 22 light years away from Earth, in the constellation Scorpius. It is one and a half times larger than Earth and orbits a red dwarf star in a triple star system. But it has a peculiarity, it is in synchronized rotation with the star, meaning that one side of the planet is always facing the sun while the other remains in complete darkness. In the eastern hemisphere, it's a hot desert, while in the west, there is an eternal ice mantle. Between the two, a narrow twilight zone, where thermometers, according to researchers from the University of Puerto Rico, can reach 27 degrees Celsius, allowing for the existence of liquid water. Due to the high gravity on the planet, all life on Kepler would likely be transferred to the air. And the first ones you can find here are giants. The mating season is full of life, and the only large species of pentapods in Glees come to the twilight zone to lead their offspring. Hot and cold air currents create a powerful wind that carries thousands of their tiny larvae around the planet. The result will determine in which half of Glees the larva will end up, and that will decide what it will become. It's called polymorphism. Ants reproduce similarly on Earth. When a queen lays eggs, each one contains the same set of genes, but both workers and soldiers can be born from them. On Glees, what the larvae will become is determined by the wind. The appearance and survival strategy of pentapods will depend on which side of the planet they end up on. The artificial intelligence imagines these creatures to look like spiders, but the size of a cat. Their five legs are arranged in a circle so they can quickly change direction, and their three tentacles allow them to quickly grab prey. The pentapods that grow in the cold and dark hemisphere are covered in hair and small bright spots that serve to attract prey, a local analog of fireflies. These beetles live in geothermal areas in the cold hemisphere of the planet, inside mud volcanoes and geysers, where the temperature can reach 100 degrees Celsius. In the icy hemisphere of Glees, fireflies use light signals to communicate, and pentapods have learned to mimic them to capture their prey. But the larvae that ended up on the hot side of Glees are less fortunate. There, pentapods look different, instead of fur, they have a smooth armor that reflects the sun's rays. They no longer have glowing spots on their bodies, but develop glands in their tentacles that produce venom. In this hemisphere of Glees, living organisms hide in the shadows of rocks and stones, where pentapods hunt their targets, desert beetles. The pentapod digs its venomous tentacles into the beetle's nests, paralyzes the victim and immediately devours it, 
but if it doesn't have time to escape before soldier beetles come to the rescue, it can become prey too. These insects live in large colonies and even prey on pentapods, finding weaknesses in their chitinous armor and biting the animal's body. According to calculations by artificial intelligence, if there are enough insects, the pentapod will not be able to escape. At first glance, living conditions on Gliese 667cc seem very challenging, but in the twilight zone, on the border of the two hemispheres, even people could feel comfortable for a short period of time. The fact is that Gliese is subject to so-called tidal heating, due to the peculiarities of the planet's orbit, its gravitational energy is transformed into thermal energy and constantly heats up the interior. Because of this, there are a growing number of active volcanoes and geysers on the planet, and the surface temperature continues to rise. In 2013, NASA scientists discovered that tides are 300 times more powerful than on Earth. It is possible that soon Gliese will become uninhabitable, but that doesn't mean that the inhabitants of such planets are doomed to failure, especially if these beings are intelligent life forms. This is our tourist, a red giant in the constellation of Boötes and the brightest star in the northern hemisphere, 110 times brighter than our sun. Current technology does not allow for the discovery of exoplanets around giant stars like Arcturus, but that doesn't mean they don't exist. Artificial intelligence has modeled that a planet that was once a second Earth could very well orbit the star, but when Arcturus became a red giant and the temperature on the planet rose dramatically, Arcturus turned into a desert. In the middle of the rocky desert, life did not die. A highly developed and civilized society inhabits the place and prepared for this outcome. All inhabitants moved into artificial domes, where they are protected from stellar radiation. In these domes, thousands of plants produce the glucose necessary for the survival of the local species. Robots maintain life support, take care of the plants and inhabitants on Arcturus A. They create other robots and even pollinate, all in special tanks hidden among the plants. Here, intelligent beings live in harmony, representatives of a much more advanced civilization than that of humans on Earth. Artificial intelligence describes them as similar to octopuses, composed entirely of nervous tissue. In fact, these creatures are brains without bodies. Each one is an individual, but together, they form a single giant organism, a hive. A similar organism exists on Earth. Researchers have discovered a vast honey mushroom that spans over 10 square kilometers. It appears to be composed of many different mushrooms, but is actually a single giant organism. Scientists believe it is 8,500 years old. The civilization on Arcturus A has existed for much longer. The planet itself is twice the age of Earth, and intelligent life emerged there hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of years ago. It is possible that humans could find a common language with these superintelligent beings, but it is unlikely that they will live together. The problem is that the planet's resources are limited. Apart from plants, there are no other sources of food. Additionally, habitable space is limited to domes. All life outside of the domes has been destroyed by the radiation from the star. Humanity would not be able to survive on Arcturus A. Imagine a perfect planet in our galaxy. A planet even better than Earth, with more oxygen and two suns shining in the sky. Perhaps this planet is Alpha Centauri C1, which orbits star A in the Alpha Centauri system, just four light years from Earth. The continents of this planet are covered with a wide variety of plant species. What's interesting is that Alpha Centauri C1 receives light from two stars at the same time, and its atmosphere has 10% more oxygen than Earth. According to calculations by artificial intelligence, this creates ideal conditions for the growth of trees and other plants. In the dense forests of this exoplanet, we find rabbit-sized beetles. These herbivores feed on local fruits and mushrooms. The AI describes them as having a vertical mouth, and this is correct, as it is the most convenient way to obtain food. 
These beetles live for only one season and have many natural enemies, so they reproduce in an unusual way. The male and female produce larvae that meet by scent and merge into a single embryo. This embryo grows in a cocoon and uses its tentacles to attach to the branches of a nearby tree. Only in this way can it survive the harsh winter. Adult beetles die when the cold arrives or become victims of local predators. Predators, in the course of evolution, these creatures similar to Earth's monkeys developed an additional pair of legs. They are longer and thinner than the others and have only three fingers that end in curved and sharp claws. In a calm state, the predators fold these legs on their chest. During the hunt, they can throw them forward and grab the prey. However, these animals are not the most dangerous creatures on Alpha Centauri C1. In fact, this planet belongs to the mushrooms, which are the true predators. They need animal protein for growth and reproduction, and to obtain it, they have developed a complete strategy. At first, the mushrooms grow yellow and succulent fruits on themselves, attracting beetles. But during the breeding season, the fruits on these mushrooms turn orange. When a beetle chooses one of these fruits, the fungus releases spores into the air. These spores enter the beetle's nervous system and change its behavior. Instead of fleeing from predators, the beetle follows its scent, becoming an easy prey. When a predator eats an infected beetle, it becomes infected with the spores. The fungus begins to grow inside the animal's body, destroying it from the inside out. The animal becomes weaker every day and eventually dies. New mushrooms grow on its corpse. Toxoplasma uses a similar strategy on Earth. This microorganism can be carried by rodents and other small mammals, but to complete its reproductive cycle, it must enter the body of a cat. In 2000, researchers from the Royal Society in London discovered that this microorganism can change the behavior of rats and mice by entering their brains. This literally makes them fearless, forcing them to come out of their hiding places and follow the smell of a cat. In 2007, a new study on Toxoplasma was released, stating that the microorganism influences biochemical processes in the human brain and even changes our behavior. Personality researchers have not yet discovered whether the fungal spores on Alpha Centauri C1 have a similar effect, but as a precaution, the first settlers should stay away from them. Besides the strange mushrooms, Alpha Centauri C1 is the perfect planet for humans. The climate here is quite similar to Earth's, but with extreme differences. Some parts of the planet resemble the hottest months of Earth's equator, and in winter, temperatures can reach minus 90 degrees Celsius. On Earth, this temperature was recorded once at the Dome Fuji Station in Antarctica. People can survive such low temperatures in specially equipped places, or at least migrate from one place to another to survive the cold season. On Alpha Centauri C1, you can often see white nights, as the planet revolves around a triple star system. Its native star, Alpha Centauri A, emits the most light and heat. The second star, Proxima Centauri, is located farther away and looks like an opaque moon in the sky. Finally, the third star, Alpha Centauri B, is the true second sun, but sometimes, due to the peculiarities of the orbits, its light can disappear from the hemisphere of the planet where it should be night. This can affect the melatonin cycle in the brain and make us sleep differently, for example, not 8 hours straight, but 2 hours 4 times a day. There is still one peculiar characteristic, people here will constantly feel a little dizzy because of the excess of oxygen. Despite all the drawbacks, Alpha Centauri C1 is the closest to being an ideal planet for humans. It's important to remember that AI models of exoplanets are based on what life on Earth looks like and the data about the physics of these planets, but what if you ask it to show an ideal habitable planet without any additional input data? I asked an AI to show what the first human trip from Earth to an ideal planet would look like, and this is what it showed. I hope you enjoyed the trip. See you in the next video.